This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on October the 17th, 2016. In this edition, James will be looking at keyboard shortcuts. Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. So, you open up your control panel. Uh-huh. You know, I already forget. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Look at your video. <laughs> <laughs> I already forget. It's been two weeks. Display settings? Yeah, okay. Scratch, scratch that out. <laughs> okay, so you right click on your desktop. There you go. Oh yeah. And you're going to display settings. And all the way at the bottom you'll find advanced display settings. And you click that. And then a new window will pop up. And I need to move this over. And then the related settings, you click advanced sizing of text and other items. And then what you're going to have to do is click on title bars or click on this and go through each one of these and boost them up by whatever number you would like. I, would do I wouldn't go any more than, if it's on 12, I wouldn't go any more than 16. Yeah. I would do it, but he has a canary when I change his settings. Yes. Don't change my stuff. <laughs> 24. <laughs> Let's see what 24 <laughs> does. <laughs> And then, um, so once you do title bars, you just click here again and go down the list, and that's how you boost up. Mm. So you would go to. Yeah, and then you would hit apply once you change it, and then you'll be in big world, as we call it. Okay, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, Skype before you start. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll just be here. Also, I forgot to put the, the most important keyboard shortcut on. Control Alt Delete. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot it. Control Alt Delete. God, I hope you didn't close it. Okay, folk, it's one o'clock and it's time to start again. And uh, before the class started, I had a question from a lady who wants to know some more about Skype. I didn't think I had Skype on this computer, but it turns out that I do. And it's logged in and everything. But the one thing that you wanted to know about Skype was how to set the volume. Okay? Um, and so there are two ways to do it. Um, if you look under, this, under the Skype window, you'll see Echo Sound Test Service. Okay? The other way to do it is to go to the tools and about tools options, I believe it is. Yeah. And under here where it says audio settings, you'll click on that and it will you can set it um, manually. But let's not do that. Okay, you don't have to, and it's for most of you, you do not have to set manually unless you have two microphones. And most people don't. Uh, when I say two microphones, you might have a headset, uh, uh, earphones and a microphone built in. Then you have to do this to tell the computer which microphone to use. But in your cases, no. If you only have one microphone, that's all you're going to do. 
And so, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Echo Sound Test Service. Should make sure you have sound on. Yes, I do. And we're going to call it. Hello, welcome to Skype Call Testing Service. After the beep, please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. Hmm. I think you're supposed to talk now. No, after the beep. I think you're deaf. <laughs> oh, well, maybe okay. Yes, yes, yes. If you are able to hear your own voice, then you have configured Skype correctly. Yeah, you did that wrong. <laughs> if you hear this message, but not your own voice, and something is wrong with your audio recording settings. Please check your microphone and microphone settings or visit skype.com for more help. Thank you for using the Skype call testing service. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, let's check into it then. Um, I don't know what's going on here, but under options, if we look under audio settings and I start talking, yes, I can see myself talking here. Okay. I can tell you what's wrong. So, how come we don't hear you? That's a good question. I hear you. James, do you have a suggestion? Yes. What? I use Skype. Go back to the tools and options. All right. And go back to the audio settings. Right. I have to do this many times. Now, that green bar, um, it would help if I stand up for this. See this little line right here? You have to uncheck automatically adjust microphone settings and make sure that that blue dot now is where all this green is and then it can actually hear you. Okay, let's try that. <laughs> Why not? Well, we want to save this. Any changes we make in this panel, we have to save. Okay? Yeah, you, you forgot to make the blue out there, but... <laughs> well, let's see if it saved it. Yeah, it's there. But he's telling you to move the blue dot where the green's going on. So it's in the green. He's telling you to move that. Alright, in there? Okay. Uh, yeah, what about that should there? All right, let's try this now. We'll call the Echo Test Service again. Hello, welcome to Skype Call Testing Service. After the beep, please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. Well, that, that's the beep, so I guess we've heard this. Uh, let's try it uh, if there is any sound coming through. Thank you. That's the beep, so I guess we've heard this. Uh, let's try it uh, if there is any sound coming through. Thank you. Oh, you're working. Yeah, uh, it's all a little bit loud. If you are able to hear your own voice, it's all a little bit loud, but that's because I have the speakers turned up and I have uh, everything turned up in the laptop. But that's how it worked, okay? Uh, so, usually, usually. If you turn Skype on and it offers to set up your sound, your sound test, that means that you have a microphone in the computer. If it doesn't offer it, then you don't have one and you'll have to go buy one. But, yeah, okay. And um, so there you go. I'm, we're just going to look at this one last time. So when you bring up... Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna redo this. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Okay, Skype. Um, when you get to Skype, you're gonna you're gonna be online like this. Okay, this is how it will come up, uh, and the list of people you can call, um, and you can even make a picture for it if you like. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to go to tools and options and then under audio, audio settings you want to be able to say a few words and have this green line active. 
okay? And like James said, from that point, you want to make sure that you uncheck automatically adjust volume, you uncheck it, and then um, move the blue dot into just where the uh, green line comes, and you should be able to hear voice. Uh, this will all be on the video, and you can go through it at your leisure uh, a little later and go through it several times and make sure that it works for you. Okay, so with that done, um, we are going to... Uh, I have a question for you, Don, with that. Yes. Place. Do you have to ask people to talk to you on Skype, or does Skype show you who's available? If you have prearranged with with uh, these people to be to have an account on Skype, they have to have an account on Skype as you do, and then um, you search for them through the Skype search mechanism, uh, their username or their name or or however. Usually, you you search for the username that they're using. That narrows it right down. And then you have to ask them, can I uh, call you on Skype? And they have to, in turn, say, yes, you may call me. Now, you don't only have to do that once to get the, the, uh, the Skype accounts into uh, this column here. You only have to do it once. Um, if they ever want to get rid of you, they just get rid of you on their end, and you don't they don't show up here anymore, and now you know you don't have any friends. <laughs> Speaking of which, how come you have your, yourself as your own contact? Because that is a, that is a second Skype account for me. It's the only friend you've got. <laughs> it's the only friend I have. I don't even have you. I know, I was saying that. But uh, that you see my name there twice because I have a second Skype account. Okay, um, so there you go. That's that's how that works. Any more questions about Skype before we yeah, close how it up? Get your picture in there. Oh, um, <laughs> S Skype will ask you whether you'd like to have it now. If you have a picture of of yourself or your cats mm -hmm. or uh, a nice um, fall scene, you can put it in there as a picture of yourself. Okay. It's just that it will show up on the other uh, on the other person calling that there's your picture. Okay, it's either you, your cat, a landscape, whatever. They will know who it is. Okay. Any other questions about Skype? Okay. Yeah, what's the difference between Skype and Uvu? Ooh. Uvu. Uvu. <laughs> uh, Uvu, you have to pay for now. Oh, really? Yeah. I was just going to say <laughs> Skype free. You say account. Is it something you buy? Yeah, no. It's, uh, Skype is free. Oh. It, I think it's, Skype is part of Microsoft. Microsoft owns them. I think that's why you have it. Yeah. Okay, James. Um, hang on a second here while I close this. You have to quit. Yes, I do, don't I? Because it runs in the background. Quit. There we go. Oop. Okay. James, tag. You're up. Oh, I was hoping I could have a break. Ooh, my aching back. <laughs> You're too young for that. Now, I'm going to apologize in advance if this isn't as good as normal because I only had pretty much a day to work on it as. I had to build a greenhouse for Grandpa and <laughs> killed me many, many times. So yesterday I, or not yesterday, I guess it would be two weeks ago, which is yesterday. We'll say yesterday. I talked about um, the keyboards and mouse and what all the buttons did. But then I didn't talk about control um, because that's the whole nother debacle and we're gonna do that debacle now <laughs> um, so control as well as Windows alt and shift they all 
uh, can be command keys as well. So, uh, which is known as keyboard shortcuts. So, I did a lot of research and found like six pages worth of uh, keyboard shortcuts that will be sent to you guys in the emails. Um, but I'm only going to talk about this much. <laughs> Not six pages. Um, and these are the most useful and um, just the most useful and you'll probably use them a lot once you get going on them. So the first one that I want to talk about is Windows plus D. So D, uh, the D key, like Donald or whatever words start off with D. Donuts. <laughs> so if you hold the Windows key and then press the D key, it will minimize every window that you have open and it will show the desktop screen. When you say minimize, you mean just take... They're, they're still running, like they're down here in your okay. taskbar. Thank you. Um, I, I was going to say that um, the difference between minimizing and closing is closing often means they're not running anymore. Well, minimize means they're still running and you can quickly go back to them. But they, um, they're just out of the way so your screen isn't cluttered. Now, if you hit the Windows D key again, or not, if you hit the Windows D to get rid of the Windows D again, it brings them back. <laughs> so, um, it's just a good way to get to the desktop quickly and back. There's another one like it called Windows Home, Windows Plus Home, where if you hit the home key, I'm just going to bring up a bunch of these again, and have this one. So if I hit Windows Home, it will again bring down all the windows minimized except for the one that you're currently working on. Um, the main window so uh, it will keep that one up so you can continue working and have no problems and see your nice picture of your dog or your cat while you're working or in this case a blue screen um, again hitting um, Windows Home again will bring up uh, all the windows in the last configuration that they had uh, but we'll put them behind your main window. Can I ask a very, very dumb question? There are no dumb questions. What, what is, when you say hit home, can you show me what you're talking about? There is a home button on your keyboard. All keyboards have them, for the most part. Um, damn it, this is French. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, the hope wait. <laughs> I've seen it. Also show me what Windows. Yeah, show us what the Windows key is. Oh, the Windows. I'll show. Okay. What is it? Let me just. Whoa. It's a bit too much. In any case, this will help. Oh, yeah. okay. Stupid French keyboards. <laughs> <laughs> so your Windows key um, oh. is typically this key with four squares. Oh, you call that the Windows key? Yeah, it's the Windows key, uh, start menu key, win key. Um, and then the home key is damn it this is also French <laughs> in any case the home key is typically this one right here on big keyboards um, so if I fit this to screen 
It's typically this one right here. Um, but on most keyboards, it will say home on it, so you just have to look through your keyboard and find it. Uh, Thank you very know. much. For example, whoop. Man, if only keyboards were this big in real life. There we go. So on, on this laptop, the home key is right here for, or is that? There's an S. It's home. We'll call it home. <laughs> um, so old keyboards have that. You just have to go rooting for them. Well, it's the row with the F numbers. Yeah. All, all the F numbers, it's, um, well, for laptops, it's next to that because they have to compact the keyboard. But for just normal size keyboards, this, these six are typically um, home, insert, page up, page down, delete. No, delete's up there. Or delete down there. One's end. I know that much because I know Finn at least. <laughs> I, know, I know French for end. I've read enough books. <laughs> I read enough books, I swear. Um, so, those are that. Uh, the control keys are, um, they're typically any key that says CTRL. And there's two of them. There's two controls, two alts, and two shifts. Um, the controls or alts are typically beside one another, and the shift key is above the control key. Um, so this is the shift key as well, and then right over there is the alt key, which is typically ALT. Um, I guess I should have said that first before I sprouted off keyboards. But um, so typically um, the four keys that you'll always be pressing for these commands are all right next to one another. You have the alt, windows, control, and shift and then a mishmash of combinations of those. So the next ones that I'm going to be talking about are going to be um, copy, paste, cut, and paste. I know I said paste twice. Um, so I have two windows here so I can demonstrate these. So, um, copy, you would take an original idea and slap it in something else, um, which is control, holding the control key and hitting C. Hopefully that worked. <laughs> um, and then the finishing for that would be control V for paste. Um, and that moved the image. The image is still here, but it's now in another folder as well. And you you can do this for text, pictures, um, documents, anything that you can highlight, you can copy and you can paste it. Um, the cut function is slightly different than copy. What cut does with control X it will shade um, the item and then if I hit control V for paste again it will move that item to the new location now so the picture won't be here anymore it will be in the new file How do you know which letters to use control V for paste? Why not P? Good question. <laughs> Probably the same reason why potassium's K. Because <laughs> they're nice and close together. So how do we know which ones to use then? But That's what this is for. <laughs> <laughs> I did my research. I did my research for you guys. There's every, everything's in here. <laughs> so you said Control C was cut. Uh, no, Control C is copy. It's copy. Well, what, what um, cut. cut is control X, control X is cut. Okay. and control V is paste. Now I could probably think of some oh 
stupid reason why this works. Yeah. When you say control X to her, does she realize you're not talking about the X on the on the the, the alphabet that you're talking about an X down? No, uh, alf uh, in the alphabet. Oh. Because the keyboards have. Sorry, my Mac. Is yeah. Different. Sorry. Um, that is. I th I know what you're talking about, and that's control. I think or command. Sorry. Um, that's pretty much control for Mac. Yeah. Um, he's the Mac guy. I'm just like, eh, I prefer PC. I'm the PC guy. Um, Control C for copy, Control X for cut. Yeah, and then Control V for V, as in v. v as in Victor. For or, paste, for paste. Yeah. yeah thank you. And I can think of a reason why it's like that. Now I'm looking at the letters. So you highlight first what it is you want to copy. Yeah, and you can highlight multiple items. So I can highlight as long as they have this blue border, that's what's going to be affected. Um, so I think control C for copy, pretty obvious, it's a C, but for cut, it's an X, and I think that's because you're cutting it out. It's no longer there. For paper reasons, you're just cutting it out and putting it somewhere else in V. It's a down arrow. Maybe just, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> They're stupid. <laughs> It gets even more worse from here. <laughs> now, pretty much every... Um, these are called actions. So copy is an action, paste is an action. And typically every action that you can do can be reversed. So I put all these over here. And if I hit control Z, as in zebra, 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 zictor. Um, it undoes the last command in a last action in an in order. So from last to first. So um, it will undo everything. So I did my copy and paste and my cut and paste. So my cut and paste is back here now, and my copy and paste is stayed there. Now I did test this because I asked my grandpa about this. You can undo deleting, but you can't undo permanent deleting. There is a difference. <laughs> so if I just make a new folder here, I'm just bam in there. Now if you just delete it with your Keep, uh, on your keyboard, if you hit Control Z, it will bring it back. And that's because it's still in your hard drive. It's in the recycle bin. Permanently deleting it wipes it out of entire existence. It's not in the recycle bin anymore, and that you can't bring back. You'll get an error message of saying, I don't know where this is. So. And Control Z only works in the session you are in. Yeah. If you, uh, if you need to use control Z, use it right away. Don't turn your computer off and think you can turn it on in an hour and undo what you did. You can't. You're in a new session. Yeah. Control Z only works in the session you are in currently. And, um, again, the, um, for every action you undo, you can redo it. Um, control Y, um, as in why not, will redo the last command that you undid. <laughs> <laughs> For whatever reason, if you went too far, if you're just spamming Control Z, you could be like, oh god, I went too far. And Control Y all the way back to where you need to be. James? Yep. Aren't there arrows that do that? Somewhere? Yes. Um, <coughs> tip, I think it's... I don't know. Sometimes they're here, sometimes they're not. Um, mm -hmm. On programs like 
um, Word documents. They're typically up here, but even if they're not there, you can, if an action can be done, typically you can redo that action with these keyboard shortcuts. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, control Z as in zebra. How dare you? <laughs> I'm confused because D, B, and D sound the same. Yeah, Z as in zebra. As in Z. Or zip, 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 um, so another good f um, function that you can do with keyboard shortcuts is Control F, as in Fig Newtons. <laughs> um, so I have good old Michael Caine up here, uh, one of my favorite actors, only the, one of the few I can remember the name of, and. If I do control F on anything that has text, um, you can then type in a word. So I want to know from, oh, well, let's do 1978 or not. Oh, I forgot a nine. How dare I? So as I type, I can uh, search for certain words or numbers, and the computer will find every time that word, phrase, number is used. And you can quickly go to them. So I typed in 1978, and it's there. Over there. And below that, and below that. and. Um, that's good if you want to know something about Michael Caine or anyone or anything, but don't want to go through the whole page to find it. You can just type in certain words and it will find how many times that is used, if any. And you can even hit enter to just cycle through them. So, like, if I want to know, what has he done in musicals? I can enter it, and I can then read just the musical section out of the whole <coughs> page. Uh, same thing for, for Word documents. Um, if you had a lot of words in here, and you wanted to find it, you, again, you would do control F. And I want to find an I in all these G's. I would just put an I and hit enter. And it shows me where that I is and how many times that I is used. And I can cycle through them. Now, you can, um, if you're not quite getting the matches you want, you can um, do match case which um, affects, like, if you capitalize your first letter, it will only look for capital whatever. So Apple, capital A, Apple. It would only find those versions of it. Um, but yeah, Control F is very useful. I used it a lot to research all this. <laughs> um, And you can really use it on anything. I think there's even a function for Well, no. Actually, yeah. Now, control F on something that has a search function like um, File Explorer will just send you to the search icon and then you can just search it there and see if you can find anything with that. So example 310 or not.
Make a liar out of me. Oh, that's because it's not 310. Whatever. Um, so, Control F, very useful um, for searching things. Um, the last two I want to talk about, um, I personally use a lot, um, and I find them very useful. Uh, the first one is alt tabbing. Now, your tab key, for the sake of this, is above your caps locks key on most keyboards, if not all of them. So, what alt tabbing does is if you hold alt and uh, keep tapping tab, you will go to a new window. So, I want to look at good old Michael Caine again. It will bring that window up and now I want to type into my text document I can alt tab to that program and it will bring up that window again now it only brings up programs that you already have open um, so if you have these open you can alt tab to them I personally use them because I play video games a lot uh, which I have full screen and you can't really close the window anywhere so I have to alt tab to look at grandpa yelling at me for not playing games and helping him where's the tab on the keyboard? it's alt tab. well the alt key is here Yeah. and then the tab key T -A -B. is yeah tab is right above on all keyboards the, um, the caps lock okay. Which is above the shift key. And the last, and um, so yeah, um, alt tab, pretty, pretty useful for just quickly switching to Windows without seeing, oh, which one's what. The last uh, keyboard shortcut I'm going to talk about is alt plus any underlined letter <laughs> so um, like if you open up I have LibreOffice open I have an F key or the F letter is underlined has a line underneath it so if I hit alt F it will bring up the file menu and then Open has a underline underneath the O, so I can do Alt O for open, and it will open the file, and I can find my files, and so forth. Um, pretty much any program has underlined letters. You just have to look um, at what they are and which does what. So, for and they will, there will almost never be a. What's the word I'm looking for? Replica? Yeah, replica. So, um, for print, it would be Control P, but for printer settings, it would be Alt. Oh, sorry, Alt Alt P. Um, for printer settings, it would be Alt R. So you just have to open up your um, menus and see what does what. Um, and if I want to exit and just Alt X, it will bring up a message of, hey, you want to save this? I don't. And it will close it. So once you get decent enough at um, keyboard shortcuts, you can pretty much run your computer without ever touching your mouse. I was going to demonstrate that, but again, I had no time to practice. So, um, I can't show that off. Thanks. <laughs> Making me do work. Um, but yeah, you will all get in your email along with the lesson, or my, my lesson notes and 
the video, uh, you'll also get a list of all the keyboard shortcuts I found. Um, and none of these are bad for your computer, so you don't have to worry about accidentally breaking your computer by fooling around with these. I made sure of that. Um, so, the, I have like six pages here. They're all from page side to side, top to bottom. Nothing but um, commands. Now I bolded the commands so you know which are the commands and what they're not. Um, there's playing in here for um, fun times. Um, there's pretty much something here for every use that you can think of. I even have all the F keys in here. The FN key, do you use that with the top F keys, or? Um, the FN key, well, I should classify the F keys that we say are also function keys. Right. And the FN key is a, it's just so more functions can be done other than just the 12. Is it kind of like the capital keys sort of for the FNs? Uh, well, Yes and no. Um, if I can zoom in on here. There we go. So if I hit the function key on, on my laptop and then hit M, it would turn into a zero. Um, so all along here, you, you have to find what your function key is colored as, and then any color coded... Anything that color that, it'll work at? Yeah. Um, just match the colors. Um, so for example, on here I have, oh, to print, um, to print the screen, you can just hit Windows print screen. However, my print screen on this laptop is the same color as my function key. So I have to hit Windows function print screen. Um, so if you do have a function key, you do have to hold the function key for that same color. Now, anyone who goes through this will notice uh, one keyboard command I forgot to put in here. And it's the most simplest one. Uh, control alt delete also known as the three finger salute, <laughs> as we like to call it. Um, pretty much... A, um, it works on all computers and what it does is um, for Windows Vista and up it will bring a menu like this open where you can lock your computer, switch users, sign out and bring out the task manager as well as um, shut it down in the corner. Um, and that was again Alt Control, Alt, Delete. And you have to hold all three of those. Thank you. Um, this can typically get you out of a lot of st sticky situations um, with your computer. And I forgot to put it on the list. I'll, I'll add it before it gets sent to you guys. <laughs> um, on Windows XP down, it just brings up the Task Manager. And I'm pretty sure if you double tap it, even now, it will just shut down the computer. Um, which can be good, can be bad, depending on if you have any unsaved data. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, me done. Uh, any questions? No, I did a good job. Sweet, I get paid. I get paid by food. Yeah, I feed it. <laughs> Okay, since James mentioned control alt delete, uh, I'm just going to, uh, and he mentioned in passing that it can get you out of trouble. I'm going to show you how. He didn't show you how, but I will. So we'll do control alt delete. And to get out of trouble, what you want to go for 
is the task manager. Typically, uh, when you're in trouble, it's because your computer has locked itself up because it downloaded something from the internet and uh, all of a sudden uh, it's, it's on a page you can't do anything with. It's insisting that you call some mutt in India <laughs> and he will help you for a whole bunch of money. Okay? That's that scam that's going around. Um, but if you use the task manager, you can get out of that. Because what, you're, what you want to do is you want to close that window that has taken over your computer. Okay? And so that's what you want to do. Um, and we're under... Um, now, it's given me a list of apps that are open. Google Chrome is usually, usually, the culprit. Or... Uh, Internet Explorer, if, whichever one you use to wander around the internet. If it's taken over your computer and you can't get out of it, you've got to get to Task Manager and then once you do that, you highlight either Google Chrome or Internet Explorer, whichever one is taken over, and you highlight it and then you go down here to the bottom to End Task. And you'll notice that Google Chrome closed. In most cases, if your computer has been taken over by something, you can get out of it by doing that. Yes? Is that if you're playing a game within Google Chrome, that's, and the game is flawed or something? Yeah, and it locks up your computer? Yes. That, it, that is a good way to close Google, Google Chrome or any other uh, misbehaving program. Sometimes uh, LibreOffice will do that if you've done too much on it. It will lock your computer up for a few minutes. The best way to get out of it is to go to Task Manager and close it. Because sometimes you can't close it with, with, the, uh, with the red X. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it won't close. Right. Task Manager and, and, um, and uh, closing an app in Task Manager uh, is a lot more... Uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? It's cutthroat. Yeah, <laughs> cutthroat. It, it goes deeper into the computer to co to close a program than just simply hitting the X up in the in the corner. Yes. When the machine's locked, can you still get to test mode? Yes, you can. In in most cases, Control Alt Delete will get you there. Okay, it's um, I'm going to do it again. Control Alt Delete gets you this screen. It has not closed anything yet. It's just put this screen in front for you to be able to use it. Okay? In most cases, if you do Control-Alt-Delete and then Control-Alt-Delete, you are telling the computer to shut down, shut everything off, and start again. In most cases, the computer will do it. Sometimes you have to do, use the shutdown button over here, but in most cases, Doing Control Alt Delete twice will turn your computer off. Um, okay, so we'll cancel out of that one more time. And all right, now that's uh, that's Control Alt Delete expanded a little bit. The one thing I wanted to talk about here now, uh, before we end this session, I had a question before the class started. Um, one of our ladies uh, got a telephone call from a Windows technician, <laughs> right? Most of you people here know that uh, I've said this often enough, but this is for the cameras and anybody else who might be watching. There is no such thing as telephone support for Microsoft or Windows or anything. There is no such animal. If you get a phone call out of the clear blue, it is someone trying to scam you. It is someone trying to get inside your wallet. I had that yesterday. Yes. Um, and you're a nice lady. Most of the time you're a nice lady. If someone calls you, you're very polite. When you get one of these calls, it is time not to be nice. 
Do not be polite. Do not engage these people in conversation. They are professional criminals. If you engage them in conversation, you don't stand a chance. They will get inside your wallet. Don't be nice. Just simply say, bull cookies, <laughs> click. Okay, I, that's all you need to do. <laughs> that's all you need to do. Or you can use, you can be nice and, and uh, say, just simply say, goodbye now, and slam the phone hard. <laughs> they get the message. But that's what you need to do. Um, if you even suspect, and the best way to suspect is if someone gets, starts you into conversation and they, and, and the next, or somewhere in that conversation is the word credit card, be careful, be looking for it, the word credit card, at that point you hang up. Okay? Yeah, Even like, I don't do that. If you call me, I don't say, well, I need your credit card before I can help you. Even I don't do that. So, yes. I've had where I bought something on the computer from Microsoft at the store, okay? And your Microsoft account comes up and everything else. They, they call me and they give me a, a number if I don't put the number in, the transaction don't go through. Yes, yeah, that's uh, that's one of that's that's one of their their uh, their safety measures. Yes. Um, that you uh, is it an automated call? It'll like like uh, say I'm going through the transaction. Yeah, and you get you get a phone All call. All of a sudden, the phone's going to ring, but it's told me the phone will ring. Yes. It's either going to ask for this or this or yeah. one of the two. You yeah. Do a, like a, a transaction number. Yes. Or it's to do with your phone number. And yeah. Too, or else it won't go through. Yeah, and this is all automated. You're not talking to a real life, genuine person. No. You're not talking to him, or, or maybe you are. I, maybe I was. Yeah. It's a woman. <laughs> a woman phone. Let's say. Okay. <laughs> uh, I I would think that uh, that most of the time this is an automated call, and that you are talking to a machine. You don't engage them in enough conversation to know. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. But what yeah. it does, it'll give me a four-digit number. If I don't yeah. put that in, the transaction does not go through. Yeah. Um, when you are, um, uh, let's say you have to reset your Google account or some other account that you have, um, if you don't have a text message function on your, um, on your, you only have a home phone and not a cell phone, mm -hmm. or, or you have a feature phone which does not have text function, um, you can tell the com uh, the com the um, the entity Google or or whatever um, call my home phone and it will give you an automated four digit number. Yeah. You're not talking to a real person. You are uh, a machine is talking to you. So don't get it right the first time, or you got to yeah. do it all again. Oh, that's, yeah. All right. Um, so that's. Um, that's that. Now there's other kinds, like um, Windows calling you, Windows support, there's bank support. Yeah. Um, hi, your grandmother has been in yeah, the we, we, Yeah, we, we've gone through a lot of these before. I would worry if you get a phone number, a phone call from your grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, and now that James is saying it, it brings me to one other, uh, one other thing that I want to just touch on briefly. Uh, as a scam, um, I know for a fact that there have been some people here in the village that have fallen victim to this, mm -hmm. and that is called the grandma. You get a telephone call from somebody that says, hello, grandma. And it may be a fa familiar voice or maybe not, and you can say, who is this, and they will give you a name you know. And from that point on, they have you. These are professionals. You don't stand a chance unless you know or suspect that you may be falling victim to the grandma scam. 
and the grandma scam usually works like, hello grandma, I'm in Bulgaria and I've been arrested. Yeah, yeah, and it, and that's and there are people in the village who have fallen victim to this for big time money, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. Okay, so I'm just mentioning that um, for the benefit of you folks here and you folks in Cameraland. Uh, that's one more thing to be aware of. Now, any other questions before we wrap this up? We have a few minutes and we have a few questions. Lady in the back. Um, when my computer upgraded itself, it changed my screensaver. I had lawn chairs in the ocean and now I got an iceberg and I knew that I could <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the ocean's still so there. It <laughs> so it, so it, upgra it, it upgraded you from seven to 10? Yes. Okay, um, yeah. Um, it, it changes though. That picture, did it belong to you? No. It, so it was just somewhere yes. on the computer that it gave you a nice lawn chair in the ocean? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm sorry, that picture's gone. <laughs> <laughs> if it was your picture, uh -huh. if you had a picture of, of uh, grandchildren or your cat mm -hmm. or whatever, um, then you could go and find it and say, I want that as wallpaper. Uh, okay. But that picture is now gone. It's gone with the upgrade. Yes. Oh, I've been over to your computer store. Yes. And I wonder if you might suggest if I were going to buy a new computer, what specific bests would I ask for? Like, I know I want Windows 10, but am yeah. I looking for other things that I shouldn't miss? Um, if you're going to the computer store that I have recommended for you, um, you're, you're not going to go wrong the young fellow there, Lucas, if that's his name, if you talk to him and ask for Lucas, um, he will he will set you straight uh, on what you need, not what you want, what you need, which is the best way to sell something. Okay. And what computer store is that? Uh, it's a computer store on um, Upper James, at. Uh, um, Kennedy. Kennedy Avenue. Kennedy is one south of Rymel mm -hmm. Road. Okay. So you go go along Rymel here to to uh, James, turn right, and it's one block south on your right. It's uh, there's a Max Milk there and uh, a store called C Computer. C the letter C Computer is in that little plaza. So if you want to go in there, uh, the, the owner's name is Ali, A-L-I, or you can talk to a young fellow in there named Lucas. And Lucas is his minion, and Lucas is a good guy. He will tell you what you need, not what you want. And the prices vary. The, the prices can vary. What you get for $100 more. Okay, what you, what you can get for $100 more... Um, is sometimes a computer that's not as good as the one you'll get for a hundred dollars less. Now, um, I had a lady um, a couple of weeks ago that uh, we went and we bought a computer at uh, C Computer, and uh, the computer she purchased uh, cost her four hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. Um, she was offered another computer for almost eight hundred dollars that uh, was not as good as the one she looked at for four hundred and fifty. The people in that store know that, and they're, um, if you tell them that you're from the village and you're part of the computer club, they're going to treat you right. Um, they will give you uh, their best advice on what you need not what you want. There is no point in buying, in any of you buying a thousand dollar computer because uh, you will not get the full benefit of it. I barely get a full benefit of money. Yeah. And I play video games. Yeah. He buys a five thousand dollar computer. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh... Fifteen hundred. <laughs> Wait, yeah, fifteen hundred. One thousand five hundred. Wow. And half of that was just the video card. Yep. <laughs> what about the make? Um, yeah. Um, 
the um, the computer store we're talking about uh, is a Lenovo dealer. Okay, he's the only one in town that does deal in Le in Lenovo. He is a, he's a Len Lenovo dealership. Yeah, L E N O V O. Uh, that is the old IBM brand. There are two uh, brands of com or, or not brands, but uh, levels of computer that you can buy. There's the consumer grade, which hey, it's great for you. They're good computers. They're consumer grade or there's business grade. And for business grade, you're gonna pay uh, a third again is more, but you can drop the computer on the ground and you may not hurt it. Mm -hmm. They're very robust. Okay, that's pretty much it, folk. I will get the, uh, the video up online as soon as I can. Also, no one problem. thing that you should never do, I've done this once, but with the uh, people who like to scam you on Windows, uh, I played along for a good long bit, but I pretended I was completely stupid with Windows. So I was like, what's that key? Why am I pressing? What am I doing? And I, I screwed with them for a good solid hour. Before I'm like, eh, I don't want to do this anymore. Well, I've, I'll do that. I, I've, I've done it. Uh, I've opened up my Mac. Okay. And the guy wants to talk about Windows. Well, okay, I'll go along <laughs> on my Mac. Oh, yeah, I did it with uh, like Windows 95. <laughs>